Hey, Sam from 3D here. Today we'll make this awesome mock-up. To learn the basics of keyframing, we'll make the objects move and the camera as well. For this video, I'll be using the free models from 3D.Design. There you can find plenty of 3D libraries to make your next render that much better. For this video, I'm assuming you know the basics of Blender. If you don't, click here to watch our basics video. Let's get to it. I'm going to start by importing the assets. To import an asset from another Blend file, I'm going to first select everything and delete. Then click on File. Append locate the dot .blend. Double click on it. I'm going to Selection and then click on Assets. The origin point of the screen is way off here, so select the font Shift S. Cursor to select it. Select the screen, right click Set Origin and Origin to the 3D cursor and now it's at the same points. And since this screen is actually parented to the phone, I can move the phone and the screen will go with it. This is a little small to work with, so I'm going to select everything and just scale it little and move it closer to the center. I'm going to make a simple scene. If you don't know anything about modeling, check out our playlist on how to model in Blender. I got my scene in a rough shape and now I can add the camera. I'm going to look through it. Press N on the keyboard. Go to view and camera to view. This will lock the camera to my mouse controls. I'm gonna frame the shot and I'm going to add some color to this. I'm going to render this animation using cycles. If you don't understand what is cycles or IMI, click here to watch our video about rendering engines. However, in short, IMI is this material preview. It's the real-time rendering engine, and Cycles is the more realistic rendering engine. It looks dark, so I'm going to add environment lights. We also have a video about that, that you can click here to watch it. Basically, it's a 360 image that adds light to the scene. I'm going to bring the strength of it a little bit down so it looks a bit darker. I'm going to use a mesh with the emit material to illuminate more of this scene. I'm not gonna go too in-depth about what I'm doing here because we do have a video on how to make scenes, and how to have great lighting. My scene is now done. It's basically a plane that I extruded and added a bevel to this corner. So we have a nice soft transition. Light objects are simple tubes with the emission shader on them. A pink and a blue emission shader and a couple of metal balls that are just thrown around so it doesn't look very empty. Since I'm going to do animation, I'm going to material preview so it's a little faster. Let's start by making the phone going up and down. For that, we'll use keyframes. Think of a keyframe, like an old cartoon. Each pose is a frame and the computer interpolate between them. So with the phone selected, I'm going to move up. Press I and set a keyframe and we can set keyframes for all of this stuff. Usually you're just going to use location, rotation and scale. In my case, I'm just going to use location because I know I won't be rotating or scaling this model. Right down here at the bottom, you can see the timeline. Right now it's set keyframes, but you can also show time by pressing Ctrl T. I want a 5 second animation, so I'm going to scroll around here. Right here in the output properties, you can see the frame rate. I'm going to leave it at 24, that's what determines how long a second takes. Now that I've set one keyframe, I'm going to move forward a little bit and I'm going to move it down and add another keyframe. And now if you play, you'll see that the phone goes down, but it stays down. We need it to go up and down. We have a couple of ways of doing this. You can enable this button, which is auto keying. So I'm going to move it forward and then move and it's going to automatically key that frame. And now if I play, it goes up and down. You could just leave it like this and then select the keyframes by pressing B to box, select Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Keep doing this to paste these frames and have them go up and down. But I don't want to do this. I'm going to use a cycles modifier. If you look closely, you can see that the phone gets faster the longer it travels. That's because we're using an interpolation type called Bezier. On the screen you can see the types of animation interpolation and how they look on the object. I'm going to leave it as Bezier but I'm going to change the timing. Now let's add the Cyclings modifier. Click on the Animation tab with the object selected. Click here and change this to Graph Editor. How the Graph Editor works is beyond the scale of this video, but it will help us to add a Cycles modifier here. We have all different keyframes in how they look. You can see the interpolation right here, and if you want to, you can move these points around. I just want this animation to keep repeating, so I'm going to click here to show all the locations. Double click on the z-axis which is the one that moves it up and down. Press N, modifiers add modifier and let's add a cycles modifier. You can see it has a little sharp edge and if you play now it will probably keep bouncing up and down. That's because when using cycling animations, 
the first keyframe needs to be exactly the same as the last keyframe. So I'm going to select this, Ctrl C, then just Ctrl V at the end. And now you can see that this line looks smooth. And if you press play, it goes up and down. It's going a little fast. And that's why I like to use the cycles modifier for this type of work. If I take the player head and move it here, select everything by pressing A and S to scale, it will scale from this blue line. Let's scale up to 60. And now if I hit play, it goes much slower. You can have an idea of what's going on with the animation on the graph here. It's much more flexible than just copying and pasting keyframes. And now let's do the same thing for the watch. One thing that you need to pay attention to is that whatever you touch on the viewport with the auto keyframing on, it's going to add keyframes. So if I move that and then move this again, it will record that. I'm going to disable the auto key, select the watch location. Go a couple frame forwards, move it up. Location. And since the last one needs to be identical to the first one, I'm going to Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Open the properties C location. Add modifier, cycles. And now the watch goes up and down. It's going a little fast. Let's do the same thing. With everything selected and with the player head above the first one, scale it up. And hit play. They're not synchronized. Whenever this one goes up, the other one goes down. So I'm just going to move the keyframes until the watch is up instead of down. And now they should go a little more in sync. Now let's work on the camera animation. The camera moves in a little bit. I'm going to go back to layouts. Look through the camera by pressing zero on my numpad. On the first frame of the scene, I'm going to keyframe the location of the camera. And now I'm going to press G to grab. See twice to move it in the direction that the camera is pointing. Otherwise it goes up. And since the camera is a little sideways, I can't really move it in the world axis. So just press G, Z, Z and move it forwards. I'll do this through the camera so I can see how it's looking. But before, move to the last keyframe because if I change it here and I move. It's not going to save since I didn't in keyframe it. So last frame to jump to the last frame. Press Shift plus right arrow and I'm going to move it in. Move this ball a little closer. This one too. Select the camera again. Press I and location. The camera has the same thing that the phone had. It goes slower and then speeds up in the middle. And then slower is again, but I don't want that. I want a linear motion. So select all the keyframes by pressing A. With your mouse over the timeline, press T and select linear. Now it goes from one position to another linearly. That's pretty much it. But before we close, I need to show you that you can also keyframe properties in Blender. So on the first frame, I'm going to make the roughness of this material zero. Press I to insert and on the last one it's going to be 1 and press I to insert a keyframe. And now if I played animation, you can see the roughness value going up gradually. This also respects interpolation type. So if I set this to linear, it goes straight from one to another. If you want to remove this from a property, just right click and click on clear keyframes. This is also how you animate characters in Blender using the pose mode and keyframes. But that's something for another video. I hope this video was useful for you. Hit the like button to help the algorithm. And to receive more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button. To access the models used in the video and many others, check out 3D.Design. If you want to be around like-minded people, check our Discord. Link in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.